Welcome to Chem Connection that provides you with regulatory news in between ChemCon conferences. Similar to the previous Chem Connection, this episode is packed with regulatory updates and actions for industry divided in smaller chunks. In this video some minor teasers and at the end of this video you can click on the actual longer videos or just browse our YouTube channel for many more interesting videos. In this Chem Connection we focus on regulatory developments in Turkey, enforcement challenges in Europe and of course the recently released chemical strategy for sustainability. I discuss this ambitious strategy, part of the European Green Deal, with Björn Hansen, the director of the European Chemicals Agency. Among others I asked Björn to describe some key elements of the chemical strategy for sustainability. In terms of the chemical strategy, what, I, what the way I would look at it is basically say what from ICAT do we see should be in there in order to make our life more impactful and work better. And I think if I would just start with just the chemical, a key that's out there, all the pieces of chemicals legislation, then I think an improvement in the way they work together in order to create more synergies, more efficiency, and more consistency is definitely one thing that I would like to see in there. Another thing that I like to see in there is a much better sharing of data so that we actually all who look at a specific chemical wherever you, you are in the union system, you have access to all the same data. That's another thing that I think would, uh, would really help. Thirdly, clearly, we need a lot of innovation in the chemicals that we use in order to get more sustainable substances. So an, an innovation agenda to help and support industry find the right compounds that we need in the future to produce. So I think those are three elements that I would definitely see in it. Many more interesting views from Björn on the chemical strategy for sustainability in the longer video. For instance, he explains some practicalities of the one substance, one assessment approach. And to stay within the context of the chemical strategy, one of the questions we addressed in the interview on enforcement was, why is it so important for the European industry to aim for zero tolerance for non-compliance? Something I asked to Sylvie Le Mans of CEVIC. Why is it important? Because we have lots of non-compliant articles on the market today. They are free riders, let's be clear, let's call a spade a spade. Um, and actually we've, we've done an analysis of the data in the um, General Product Safety Directive, in the RAPEX data, which have shown that 92% of the non-compliances we've reached, which are reported on consumer articles under RAPEX, come from non-EU countries. So clearly there's, um, there's a missed opportunity there's in, in terms of enforcement, but also in terms of safety. So it's um, so when, when it comes to a major initiatives like the chemical strategy, yes, we do expect enforcement to come first and foremost as a measure or as a series of measures. And it starts with enforcing safety, starts with enforcing existing measures. Another topic we discussed were the results of a pilot project of ECA's enforcement form on imports of products into the EU. Erwin Anis of ECA shared some of the key results of that pilot project. The chance of finding non-compliancy looks to be clearly more in from the moment that we are looking at imported articles. And that's why we have been doing this pilot project, which was also a test in working together between REACH enforcement authorities and the customs, uh, because it's very clear that if you can stop the import of these non articles at the border of the European Union, it is a win-win situation for everyone. They are not entering, they are not coming in their in or warehouses, and we don't have to lose uh, and, and to dispatch all the different national enforcement authorities to go to do the inspections in all malls that we have, and uh, storehouses, warehouses, uh, shops. So it's clearly something which could have a um, higher added value creating and augmenting uh, the efficiency of enforcement. In the interview we also discussed upcoming priorities for the forum and enforcement tools that should be developed for enforcement authorities, as well as the quality of SDS and the advantages of product passports in achieving circular economy goals and increased chemical recycling. In the enforcement interview we focused on the European Union, but there is more out there. For instance, just across the EU border there is Turkey, 
Also in Turkey, authorities and industry are very busy with, of course, KK Dick. With less than three months ago before KK Dick registration, I asked Dilek Erkan from the Turkish Ministry of Environment and Urbanization what the key points of the registration process are. As you know, different from EU reach, the registration dates don't depend on tonnage bans in Turkey. There is only one three-year transition period for the substances which are manufactured or imported before 2024, independently of tonnage bans. Transition period shall be started on 2021 and will be finished by 2024. And also 2024 is the entry into force date of the no data, no market provision. As registration time is coming, the companies are sending press substance information exchange forums, RSCFs, via Turkish chemicals registration system and get the chance to see the contact details of suppliers for the same substance. Thus, one registration dossier for one substance will be achieved as in reach by joint registration submissions. Up till today, about 95,000 pre-CFs sent via chemicals registration system for above 15,000 substances. For registrations, information requirements are same with reach as listed in annexes 7 to 10. We emphasize that available data can be used to prevent repetition of tests. Chemicals registration system is in Turkish, so the entries of information requirements should be in Turkish, including study summaries, but additional test reports can be submitted in English. In Kikidik, I mean in Turkish reach, the registration dossiers shall be reviewed by certified chemical assessment experts and the companies shall give the details of the experts in their dossiers. More on the chemical assessment in the full version of this video. In that longer version, DILEC also talks about the KKDIC registration fees, as well as other amendments or new legislation for chemicals in Turkey. So it's highly recommended to watch the longer videos of this October 2020 Chem Connection. I'm already looking forward to our next Chem Connection, which is likely to cover the latest status on Brexit and UK reach. Thank you for watching and above all, stay healthy.